Hello and welcome. In this lesson, we'll be implementing a chatbot that lets us talk to our own documents in only five lines of code. This is going to be the simplest example that we can create with Llama Index, and it's already very useful on its own. I've created a new folder, and there is a new file called chat underscore example.py. And in the folder, I've also created a subfolder called documents, which has three files that we've provided as an example. You can find these files in the course files section. One of these files is a 19 page um, policy document from our one of our other products at Zemba, which is called Zemba Schools. It is a product for high schools. It's a K-12 platform. So we provided the full information security policy here. It's a 19 page Word document, file format docx. The second document here is a set of onboarding slides in PDF. We have the slides here that we use sometimes to show to new schools how these can be implemented. And lastly, we have a full export of our knowledge base portal. So this is a CSV file, which I'm opening here with Excel that has all of the articles from our knowledge base. Our knowledge base is uh, hosted online and we've exported all of that into a CSV file. All right, so we have those three documents and we're going to create a chatbot that lets us ask questions about those documents. So let's get started. The first thing that we need to do is incorporate Llama Index, which should be already installed in your system. I'm going to type from Llama underscore index import vector store index. And also we're going to import simple directory reader. Those two objects are the ones that we are going to be using in this example. Next, we want to load these documents from our drive. I'm going to type documents equals simple directory reader and then a parenthesis. And we're going to enter the name of the folder where our documents are. In this case, this folder is called documents and then dot load underscore data. And we're going to call that method. So what this does, it will load that folder and load all of the files and create those as documents using Llama index. If you had a file format that's for some reason not supported, sometimes you might get a prompt to install another package and then you can follow the prompt and install that package and that will let you import these documents. Now that we have the documents loaded, we want to be able to create an index that then is going to be used to search these documents, to query these documents, and provide us with the answers that we need. We're going to create a variable called index equals vector store index dot from underscore documents. So this is going to create an index from a set of documents. And inside of the parentheses here, we're going to pass in our documents variable. All right. So with this, we should have an index. Next. We want to be able to create a chat engine that's going to take this in index and create a chat for us to talk to. Let's call this chat underscore engine equals index dot as underscore chat engine. So we're specifying, we're, we're calling this method that lets us specify what type of engine we're going to be using because it could be a chat index or a query index. A query index will just run one sim single query and that's the end of it. A chat, on the other hand, is going to have the ability to go back and forth and talk to this uh, chatting tool. We're going to be passing a parameter inside of as chat index, which is called verbose equals true. And this is just going to log more information in the console about what's going on. It's going to be more helpful to see what's happening behind the scenes. And next, we're going to type chat underscore engine dot chat underscore REPL parenthesis. And this is just going to open an interactive console there for us to talk to. Now, let's go and run this in our terminal to see what we get. And we are going to see if this chat as it is works the way that we need it to work or not. So let's go and run this. I'm going to press Control F5. The execution of this script can be a bit slow because it is loading all of these files and it is generating the index. But once it's completed, you should be able to see the chat. Just a quick note, though, is that if you have the Word document open, Microsoft Word 
generates temporary files when you have a document that is open. And those temporary files can actually break the execution of the code. So I'd recommend closing the documents before you run the script. But now that we have our chat, you can see that it says here, entering chat REPL, uh, type exit, exit to exit. We can start talking to these documents. So I'm going to ask them about something that I know is in those documents. In particular, uh, there is a particular school that was in this presentation. So I'm going to ask it about that particular school. So I'm going to ask how did Ignacio Spark implement Zemba schools. And let's see what we get. OK, it says, I'm sorry, but I don't have access to specific information. So it looks like it is not actually searching in our document. It says that it has no idea what this is. Let's ask a different question that has nothing to do with the documents we put in here. Um, how many planets are there in our solar system? So this chat, if we wanted it to be about our documents, it shouldn't be able to answer these sort of things because otherwise it can go on all sorts of weird tangents. It is just chat GPT at the end of the day. Um, so let's make a change here that will allow us to um, constraint these chats so that it can only talk about what's in our documents because that's really what we want when we are building these solutions. So I'm going to type exit here and close the terminal. And if we go to the documentation of Llama Index, uh, which is a website that is going to be incredibly useful and helpful when you are developing with Llama Index, if we find the section about the chat engine, um, you're going to see that there is uh, a few chat modes that are available. And by default, it has a mode in which it decides whether it's going to look for the answer in your documents or whether it's just going to use the API. It is the default one, at least at the time of this recording. But what we really need is that it only reads our documents. So we need the mode that's called the React mode. Um, so let's go back to our chat. And when we defined our chat engine, we're going to add another property here that's going to be chat underscore mode equals react. And we're going to execute this again. And when that's done, we're going to ask the same question. And hope to get a better response this time. So that's interesting. We didn't see this logging happening before, right? Next, last time that we asked, it just threw a response. Whereas now it is saying, thought, I need to use a tool to help me answer the question. Action, query index tool. So it is using a query internally. Then it's, it's submitted the question to this eng a query engine and it is obtained information that's based on the PDF and then it's generated a response for us. So you can see that now it is actually looking into the documents and it is giving us the correct answer. I'm going to ask it another question. Let me first show you what I'm going to ask it. So Zemba Schools has two-factor authentication, but only for some of the accounts. The teacher accounts and the school administrators, they have uh, two-factor authentication as an option, but students don't have two-factor authentication. All right, so let's see if it can tell us which types of accounts can use uh, two-factor authentication. So let's try that here. Which types of accounts can use two-factor authentication? And it is getting us the correct. So it is looking into the query engine. It is sending that input. And it is getting the correct response for us. So that gives us a basic chat that we can use to talk to our documents. But what comes next, OK? We saw that this takes a while to generate each time because we are reading those documents. We're creating an index each time. So what we will be looking at next is how can we save that index for later reutilization so that we don't have to always create the index? Because imagine if you have a lot of documents, a lot of files, that could take a really long time. So you definitely want to be able to save those documents. And that's what we'll be looking at next. Thank you for watching. I look forward to seeing you in the next lesson.